All right, guys, we're gonna try to figure out how to do hango dangle today. <laughs> so, first things first, let's think of how this can go bad fast, right? So, I'm gonna have uh, Kirsten here come over, and we're gonna cartwheel into uh, let's have cartwheel into straddle back. Huh? Let me turn that. Okay. Okay, great. In. Boom. Right? So hango dangle will look like this. Um, your, your leg that's more open was which leg? So pick one. So if your leg is more open on one side, go for that side. So if that leg's open, you'll take the opposite arm, opposite arm, grab the outside of your foot. Now reach. There it is. This hand feeds through the eye of the needle like that, and your whole body goes through it that way. Like this. And you have to hold on to that. This is going to stretch here and stretch your leg there. See how that feels. Okay, and you'll feel a little pressure there on your leg. Okay, so worst fall. When you all your weight is on this side, more than likely you're gonna fall over here towards the side. And if you have a bunch of concrete, you're gonna land right there. So basis, be really mindful. If you're starting to fall, bend your knee and support your flyer with your hands as much as you can with, between her head and the concrete. So I always recommend these giant mats. Place them right where you're likely to fall, which is towards the side where the head is because all the weight's going over there. Okay. So let's break it down. Whew. That's a good body stretch. Yeah, this is sure. super deep. And then I'll show you some, some exercises you can do um, by yourself at home to open up your um, legs to be able to hold that position. So let's go again. Um, let me see what you do with the face cam. Foot placement. Okay, we'll cartwheel in. A little more towards, nice cartwheel is where your feet are across my hips. I feel the line works better. Because that's my center of gravity. I'm trying to keep my flyer right in this area. So you want to also be in line with that hip too when you enter in cartwheel, okay? It's a little wider leg. I'm debating if I should have you, we're kind of be on this way a little bit. Correct, because of the, yes, you're right. You could also fall head over heels that way. Great point. Um, so because of that, why don't we just go over this way, right? Like that. So you're not gonna fall over here. You could fall back, okay? So we're cartwheeling, turning towards me. Okay, you got it. Yeah, it's a very common thing, very common. Over, pushing the arms, nice. Okay, we'll take the opposite hand, grabbing the outside of the foot. This is going to be a tremendous stretch on your side here. So what, what she does is you can, as the base, guide her, push her up here so she can grab the foot. So th that can work, but I find a better grab is on the outside. The reason being is I think that it's stronger. What is it for you? Is that Wait, okay? This, is this hand on the outside here. How's that? No. You can grab there or grab the ankle. Uh, wherever you feel it works for you, okay? And then watch this foot here. If my foot here is too far out on your hip, Kirsten, it's gonna hurt. I have to tuck it as deep as I can into that crease and turn my toes in. And then help you push through the eye of the needle there. Up this way. Yes, you can take both hands and grab that foot if you want. That way you can hold on easier. And then from here, my shin braces against your back and this leg just drops as deep as you can. And you feel a tremendous pressure there in your thigh. And you're just hanging out. Down. And when you fall, you have to unbind your hands so you don't fall on your head. Because anytime you're in a bound position, you're putting yourself in danger. It looks beautiful and pretty, but it's also very dangerous. So if you feel there's a fall, your base wants to say down, and you want to unbind and trust that your base has, has hands up to support your fall, okay? Let's try that again. Cartwheel in. We'll take this hand, reach all the way on the outside of your foot. The other hand feeds through the eye of the needle here. It can also grab the foot if you want at first. And then eventually when you feel like you can hold on just with that hand, this hand will draw, let go and draw a perpendicular line towards the ground like that. Beautiful, I'm palm facing the audience like that. All right? Okay, if the foot deep into the hip crease, turn the toes in, we go through here. See if you can go through even a little further and drop that leg as low as you can. There it is. 
That's Hango Dango. And then now I'm pressing through my, my toes to be able to press or back this way. It's very important with the toes, pressing back. And that's Hango Dango. And how do you come out of it? The foot person has basically put the foot back on the hip to get you back in the straddle. <laughs> that's the safest way, okay? Can we try it on the other side? Yes, let's try. Let's do it. It might not. We'll see what the flexibility is. It's a good call. There you go. Over. Because this isn't just about leg flexibility, it's about your side flexibility. So between yeah. these two stretches, um, you figure out which side works better for you, okay? So the opposite hand grabs the outside of the foot. You can help your base on her help her flyer by pushing, bending your knee so she can meet you there and then pushing her up, up there. And be careful, now she's going this way, so I want to make sure she doesn't fall on her head that way, right? So make sure there are a lot of mats on that side. So now I took this mat, I placed it over here onto the left side so she didn't fall on her head. So I help her by taking the shoulder, feeding her through the eye of the needle there. Up, my, watch my foot. It's not way out here, it's tucked in as deep as possible. With my toes turned in towards the heat cre hip crease, I help turn her through. And I'll keep this foot here on her hip until I find a balance. You don't need to let go of that foot yet. My toes are pressing up, bring her back this way. Nice perpendicular hand goes back slightly a little more. There is right there is a nice straight line. I can slowly take this foot away. When I do, she's gonna to wanna to sink down this way. That's why my foot needs to be in her crease as tight as I can. As tight as possible. There it is. See you can drop this leg even further. There it is. And <laughs> Yeah, so a good thing to do um, on the ground. It's a super deep stretch. On the ground, try this first. Lay down on the ground, grab the opposite foot, and just try that stretch. See how that feels on your side and your leg. Now slowly figure out how to finagle your hand and your head through that little hole, that little needle here. Try to thread that eye of the needle over. One thing you do is go into like a child's pose like this. Try to wrap your leg over the shoulder like this first. And just get this. Try to open here first and open your legs slowly to get into it. So always try stuff on the ground first. Get really comfortable with your body and positions on the ground before you go into someone's feet. Because if you can't hold it on the ground, what makes you, it's just not a good idea or a smart idea to because once you're up high, you're even more uncomfortable than you are on the ground. So make sure you feel super, super comfortable holding a hangle dangle on the ground first. I don't know the name, the yoga term for it, but basically you saw what it looks like. Hand, opposite foot, go through. Just practice opening yourself here first before you go up high.